have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Welcome to Twin Talks. I'm Nadia. And I'm Nikki. And today we're going to talk about the issue of George Floyd. At first we weren't going to talk about it because we thought it might have been saturated, but throughout this week, you know, there's been a lot of comments that I've overheard and it's all lives matter making statements like that and I just was getting really annoyed by it frankly I just get annoyed because it's obvious that all lives matter absolutely but in this case black people are seeing it as if our lives don't matter and I think by saying all lives matter and in a situation like this it's very dismissive and and it's it's kind of hurtful. So I just wanted to bring that up. I think that when you look back at the footage in the 1960s civil rights movement, and then you fast forward it to 2020, it's almost the exact same footage, but styling people in 2020. <laughs> it's not even funny. I thought we moved forward, but it's clear that um, I thought wrong. I don't know, what do you think? I think that there are aspects clearly that we've moved forward, but this is a very sad, um, issue and uh, we're not trying to be cliche I mean this you know we both have children I have a girl and a boy and I have a black son and I have black brothers and I had a black father you know my dad was born in 1926 and he was born in Jamaica and he did a lot of his schooling in the United States uh, right during that civil rights movement and he faced a lot of, of, of uh, prejudice and a lot of issues and it, it hurts me that my son and my brothers uh, and, and her son, son are, are having these issues. Um, that they don't have, my, my brothers do, my kids not yet, but I'm scared to parent. Um, I spoke to my brother today and I said, you know, when, when my dad was parenting us, uh, obviously because we're girls, it's a different situation, right? Um, and so I asked my brother, I said, what did he say to you, you know, in terms of, what what are we going to do about it like how what did he say to you around you know if you get stopped by a police officer did he offer anything because my dad has since passed and my brother said yes you know what when they were 18 uh, they he, my dad uh, they would go to get the car and my dad would say the following you have to get your license you know uh, he says get your license watch out for the police if you are stopped by the police he said, um, you need to make sure that you don't, you, you don't make yourself a threat. So he goes, I don't want you wearing a ball cap. I don't want you wearing a hoodie. I don't want you to act aggressive or freak out in any way. Um, and if you need to move, you don't make any sudden movements. You move slowly and you ask permission. Now you gotta remember, because I'm sure people are going, what do you mean asking permission in this day and age 2020? And I would agree, you should be able to wear what you want, speak the way you want but coming from my dad who went through civil rights this is what he told my brothers and he said if you do that then hopefully not hopefully nothing will happen i would just raise the point that you know he never said that to us he said that to his black sons and i'm wondering are the white kids having that conversation or i highly any doubt other, and, and any other race having this conversation and I am actually quite speechless at this point. So I guess the issue here for us is, um, you know, we've, we've heard it, the, the George Floyd um, issue has gone on for weeks. And I really think during COVID, during George Floyd, the silver lining is, there isn't much of a silver lining, but at least globally, everybody is coming together and at least acknowledging that what they saw on that video it was absolutely wrong and I mean it's horrible and it's an awful thing but now people can see what's been going on for a long time and I we we totally acknowledge all lives matter uh, no one's saying that we don't acknowledge everybody else's lives but we cannot detract from the issue of black lives because this has happened time and time and time again 
with Trayvon Martin, with George Floyd, with all these different people, and we get three weeks, we get three weeks of people taking a knee and organizing rallies, and I know I sound a little ticked off, but you know, in two weeks, we might be back to somebody else, right? And all I gotta pray and hope that my kids aren't one of those people in a year or two years or in five years or in 10 years. We have to worry about that, and some people don't, but I'm already worrying about what do I say to him when he leaves the house? Is that the last time I'm gonna see him because he's in the wrong spot at the wrong time? Yeah, absolutely, and it, I guess- It worries me. It's, it's one Sorry. of those things that um, a lot of visible minorities have to worry about that, and I don't think that um, people realize it, right? It, right? And so when you say all lives matter, it's very dismissive at a time like this. Absolutely. So I just wanted to bring it to the attention. I'm, I, I think that people say it um, to say it because they want to say something, but in this particular case, I don't feel it's an appropriate time to say it uh, when this poor man could not breathe and he was harmless at the time from the videotape he looked harmless and I think his life was taken in vain and mm -hmm. and it happens too often I don't know how to change it I don't know what we can do to change it but I think in 2020 we should be um, mature enough and and smart enough intelligent enough to be able to have the conversation and to start moving forward now I would say um when we're looking forward, because we have to be hopeful that things will move forward. It might not come tomorrow, and I don't even expect it. Like, I mean, as a black person, I'm just I'm not trying to be cynical. I don't expect it happening overnight. But uh, as black people, you keep, you keep raising your sons to be excellent people like you have been, you know, being polite as always, being confident, and then in times, you know, you will be able to realize maybe, uh, maybe not this generation, maybe even a couple generations, if you chip away and train your kids to have that confidence and move forward, that we can convince the, the majority so that their lives will get easier. That's all we can ask for, just to get life a little bit easier. And, and also the last thing is, you know, I know this is a heavy topic, but we do need to acknowledge during COVID, during this George Floyd, um, like after his passing, people from all over the world, black, white, Indian, Asian, everybody oh. came together and, and um, protest. protest to stand beside us as black people to raise awareness. And I just hope that this momentum can really get surged into the future so that, you know, maybe not tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, but I don't think it'll happen tomorrow. But over generations, our kids and everybody can live a little, um, a little bit happier and um, be a little bit more safe. Because I'm scared right now, I'm not going to lie, for my son. I am too. And I don't know and if you're seeing this, but when, when somebody says Black Lives Matter, then you've got the counter, no, all lives matter, and now you've got the divisiveness. But every black person knows that all, all lives matter. I don't think we need to, we don't need to be told that. And we don't need to take the issue away from what's actually going on. Because what ends up happening is you've people got enough angry. people doing that. By, you know, blaming looters. No black person wants the, any businesses, white, black, Asian, Indian, to be looted. No educated person wants that to happen, but of course you're gonna have the small amount of people, black, white, everybody looting because it's advantageous for them. But let's not lose sight on what's happening. Stay focused on the issue. Killed, and he should not have been. And, and it he, happened to be a black man who got completely snuffed. And he's not no the only one. Reason. And he was the one, he, the, he he was snuffed, and there's so many of them, and you just don't want to see their lives in vain. You know, we're in this really special time in history where not only are we in a pandemic, but something like this happens, and this to me is a moment that is equivalent to, like, it's a big moment in history. Like, this, I think, is a big deal. 
in that um, it's like when the Twin Towers, where were you when the Twin Towers went down? Where were you when uh, Michael Jackson <laughs> died? Where were you uh, when J JFK was, was assassinated? Yeah. This and where were you when you heard about George Floyd's passing, when you watched that video? Okay, it's monumental and um, I think this is a pivotal time and I think hopefully um, if, if we can build momentum, we might be able to get some systematic change over time and, but it won't, you're gonna take some real chipping away of parents, black parents, working on their kids, their sons, and making sure that they behave appropriately. My dad did his best. Some people will go, well, I think you, you know, that's a little crazy asking permission, but this is who he was in the 1970s and 80s. But it's also important that the, that the parents of the whites and other races do the same thing. Yeah. And not, not teach their kids to dismiss the situation because this is a very big reality for all of us yeah for all visible minorities it's our reality and do not be dismissive because yeah. yeah. it's not your path it's ours yes and the way you will look at things just because of the way you're raised right might be different from the way a black person sees it because of our perspective doesn't and make you wrong doesn't make us wrong but all i'm saying is you need to acknowledge both We'll acknowledge yours, and you need to see where we're coming from. That's right. Moving forward, uh, I would urge, you know, black parents to continue what you're doing uh, and try and raise your kids to be confident, but to also have them realize that there will be prejudice, and therefore you need to act accordingly. Now, I will probably follow the same things that my dad taught my brothers, which is to never freak out, <laughs> Try and always have your license with you. Not wear a ball cap when you're driving. Move slowly and ask when you need to move so that there's no mistakes. It, I mean, some people will disagree with it, but that's what I'm gonna do. You guys do your own thing. But I think all, all parents should be teaching their kids about uh, racism and that it does exist and not to be dismissive when someone has issues like this. Basically, you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. So I'm not sure how we're going to move forward, but I hope that everyone now has acknowledged the fact that these things really do happen. Yes, and I think in the past, um, this has been the complaint. I can't speak, we can't speak for all black people, but the dismissiveness and thinking, oh, it's really not happening, it's in our head. It's on video and it's happening around the world. And we all, I think, we know we have the capabilities based on what's been happening in the last two weeks to come together and make mountains change. And so this is the, this is the moment where we all need to take this and move forward without being cliche. It might not happen over uh, a short amount of time, but I would like to see that my kids' children within a generation can walk safely and feel free That's right. like everybody else has come accustomed ex except maybe for minority kids. That's correct, I mean. So, you know, I thanks. I agree with you, Nikki, I do. Thank for you. once, I thank agree you. with you on something. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. And thank you for your support. At the end of our vi video today, we're going to um, honor George Floyd's, Floyd's life and we're going to tribute him in memoriam with a 8 minute and 46 second uh, blank screen uh, to honor the 8 minutes and 46 seconds that he was held down. If you'd like to join us, please join us in memoriam. <laughs>